Hello and welcome to Lydia's Secret Sewage. I'm Lydia and this is my channel where I talk about material culture and I make sewing projects and I do research stuff and talk about it at length. Today is going to be a little bit different because I'm tired, real hot, so sweaty, and I want to do something a bit easier on myself. So today I'm doing a vlog. My last couple videos did pretty well and I got so much lovely feedback and it was so nice and we finally hit 666 subscribers as of yesterday. When I started this channel I was unemployed and I had a lot of time on my hands to get into those research holes and to make things and now I have a full-time job, not a lot of time, and no sewing machine. So things have slowed down a little bit and I want to keep putting out stuff regularly and just make it a bit more bite-sized. So today we're doing something fun. I figured we'd go thrift shopping and I'd just try to find some fabric. I have a few projects on the go right now but one of them is a bit stalled out because I can't find any adequate faux fur. So I'm gonna try to find some of that today. <laughs> maybe we'll be successful, maybe we won't, but I'll probably buy a bunch of other stuff. And then when I come home, I'm going to talk to you all about what I could use that fabric for, like a linen, I can use it for medieval underwear, or like polyester brocade that has a pattern that makes it appropriate for Renaissance Italy or something. I think people get a bit daunted by historical sewing because there's people online who say you must make everything out of linen and pure wool and bombazine. Those things are just hard to find for any reasonable price and if you're just making a silly thing just to see what it'll be like, that's not really a reasonable option. Anyway, I'm sitting in the sun and I'm very sweaty and I'm getting greasier with every second, so let's go off into the world and do the thing. We are now at the thrift store. something that looked like it had been treaded on and I wanted to check it out and oh my gosh okay why am I here I am leaving this store right now I'm done at the thrift store making my way home let's take a break and look at all this garbage so first thing is this presumably linen cotton blend duvet cover this is kind of cool. Probably poly cotton velveteen. This is a coarsely woven wool blend. Yeah, it has a real old wool smell. It might actually be pure wool. Many yards of this um, very like soft wool. What I'm pretty sure is 100% suiting wool. It's not that much, it's like a yard and a half. Coating wool in like a lot of yards, like six yards of coating wool. I think it's some sort of blend. So we'll have to test that out when we get home. So in this big, big pile, what I did not get is anything to use as the lining for my Burgundian gown. So, oops. Uh, good morning, it's the next day and I'm going to shoot some cinematic fabric b-roll and then we're going to analyze the fiber content of what we got and make sure it is what I think it is um, and maybe some of my uh, stash as well and talk about some of the historical possible uses for these kinds of fabrics.
I'll test the fiber content of the fabric I bought using the burn test. Even if I'm not going to discriminate based on whether a fabric is silk or polyester, I do like to do this test just to develop a feel for fabrics. With the burn test, it's easy to tell whether your fabric is in the broad category of synthetic, cellulose, or protein-based fiber. It might not tell you the exact flavor though, or whether it's a blend. So I'm just doing this to revise my best guess on what it is that I bought. First up is this brown suiting that I think is pure wool. It is a twilled worsted wool, meaning a smooth, long staple wool. Worsted is common from the 17th century onward, and since I only have a little bit, maybe I'll use this for stays, but more research is needed to see if this is actually appropriate for that. Wool is naturally somewhat flame resistant. This has a hard time catching. It bubbles as it burns and leaves behind a crispy black thing like charred meat. It smells like burning hair and I can completely crush the ash. This is 100% wool. This is a melton, meaning a heavyweight coating wool that is thoroughly fulled or worked until it is densely felted. I think this will be an okay stand-in for a heavy broadcloth. Broadcloth was a plain weave woolen cloth woven by two people on extra wide looms. It was then fulled which shrunk the cloth considerably in addition to felting it. This is heavier and coarser than luxury medieval broadcloth, but it will work great for really any medieval to modern outerwear. It burns like the suiting wool, but doesn't entirely crisp away. There's a hard edge, so this is a blend with some sort of synthetic fiber. Let's look at a 100% synthetic textile for the sake of comparison. This is a cheap iridescent faux silk curtain in my stash that I believe to be polyester. It has a weft of blue and a warp of beige, which gives it the cool iridescent effects, and this is totally accessible to any weaver throughout history, pretty much. It's called changeable silk or shot silk, and this was particularly popular in the 18th century. It's a very rococo look. It catches extremely easily and produces an acrid black smoke and it melts as it burns. This is actually probably acetate because polyester isn't as enthusiastic as this. It produces a hard plasticky bead that can't be crushed. Next is this coarsely woven wool in an intense matter red color. My phone is completely perplexed by reds, but here's another photo of it. It's a slightly warm red that looks a lot like colors produced by the inexpensive matter plant. Medieval and Renaissance Europe used humoral medicine, and accordingly a warm, intense red like this was viewed as a practical and healthy choice for a petticoat of any class. It catches easier and leaves more of a hard edge. I think it's a 50-50 wool polyester. Our final wool is a lightly fulled, very soft twill weave. It's soft like cashmere, which is made from goats and would have been available in Asia going way back in history, but it's distinct from the English sheep wools that would have dominated the European market. Still, I'm going to use it for a medieval gown because I have enough of it. It lights very easily, but it doesn't smell like burning plastic and it only has a bit of a hair smell, otherwise it just smells like burning paper. So it's not pure cashmere, but it's also not very synthetic. It's some sort of blend with a lot of rayon. Rayon is a man-made fiber that is made from natural cellulose. It was originally made to imitate silk, but it can also imitate wool and linen pretty well. And it burns very similarly to natural cellulose fibers, like cotton, linen, and hemp. These fibers all burn exactly the same, which is a lot like paper. They catch easily and leave behind glowing embers, and they burn to nothing, just leaving a light powdery ash. This is probably all cotton. I don't know why I thought it was linen. You can't tell the difference from the burn test, but anyway, I'm going to use this for an 18th century petticoat. This velveteen burns exactly the same. It's 100% cotton. It is also the perfect color for luxurious Kermes dyed velvets or later cochineal imported from Mexico. Silk velvet of this exact color is the epitome of status in the late medieval and early modern world. Kermes was also used to produce a luxurious woolen cloth called scarlet, and this material often gets used as a placket in Burgundian gowns. And that's all I got, but I kept lighting my stash on fire for a while. This is silk. This is rayon, I think. Doo-doo-doo. 
Burn, burn, burn. I forget what this is. So I hope this was educational or inspiring or at least fun to watch. I certainly enjoyed going to the thrift store with a license to hoard, but I'm a bit sad that I don't have any gaudy, historically adequate polyester upholstery fabric to share with you today. Maybe next time. I have some aspirations to make moves on this Burgundian gown in time for cozy. If you don't already know, a bunch of cosplayers and historical costumers across YouTube are putting together a whole lovely weekend full of tutorials, panels, and other online events in August. It will be totally free and on YouTube, and it's a great way to find other channels like this one. Until next time, stay curious and stay cheap, my friends. I might change my channel name because it's kind of weird, so definitely subscribe if you don't want to lose me into the void of the internet. <laughs> um, yep. That's it. Thank you for being here. Have a, a lovely couple of weeks. Bye.